comments. In this video, I will be addressing your comments, criticisms, compliments, questions. What energy you bring here, I will return to you with the maintenance of rule one, rule equal, the balance of the honor and the grace, and the possession of peace and neutrality. Keep in mind, no one is twisting your arm to be here, so keep that in mind. If you are going to make claims or if you are choosing to not read the terms and conditions of the comments field, well then you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Now, I don't ever take anything personally here. I recommend that you do the same. What I'm saying in this comments video is a critique based upon using the lens of correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar i.e. quantum grammar, the wonderful technology brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Ivan Colin Miller. Keep that in mind. Everything I say is pretty much through that lens. So with that in mind, let's get to it. All right, folks. First comment comes from member William Joseph Hermosa. Thank you for your membership. And they say, why the brackets for the of the glass why the brackets for the of the glass my cooling on to that is I explain this multiple times in various videos over the last few months I will explain it to you tomorrow if you can't figure it out for yourself before then meaning I had a consultation with William the day after that comment was posted now I'm using this comment to for as an example of someone like William who has been commenting or been a subscriber of my YouTube channel for several years and been studying, but yet they have not taken workshops. They have not taken that committed final step to learning this grammar, but yet they've been studying for a couple years and they don't know the answer to this very simplest of questions which I've given closure to multiple times, as I explain in my Kuliana to his comment. If you're really studying the videos, if you're really paying attention and really looking at the details, you would know the answer to this question, especially if you've seen every video I've published in the last couple months. Because this is a recent development, I started using brackets, and I'll give you a hint. It's because YouTube does not allow for bottom lining, underlining in their titles or in the description of their videos. And that's all I'm going to say about that. You can study it and figure it out for yourself. Definitely not here to spoon feed folks. You got to do your own work. What you put in is what you get out. But I did give William closure to why that was in the consult that we had. Next comment comes from Pi314, and they say, For this claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the seek, with the gain of the closure, with the channel owner party's knowledge of the channel owner party's matter with this conveyance by the claimant. Okay. So we see some... Uh, Okay, let me read my answer to this, or my kuleana. Why do you continue to use particles of negation in your facts? Also, please clarify your sentences. I'm not sure what you're seeking. You are not asking a question, yet you seem to be seeking something. Translating to plain English for the balance of honor and grace is a great clarifier, especially when the author claimant does not possess full closure on correct sentence structure, which this individual does not. And this is one of those individuals that has contacted me at various times over the years that they want to convince me that they're ready to learn this, they're ready to commit, they're ready to move forward, and then they never do because of whatever reason. And this, is, this, this guy has done this a few times. So henceforth, that's why they don't have closure on the grammar. And as I'm looking at this, I, I see missing punctuation as well. I see a missing hyphen in um, their compound facts. Of course, the particle of negation that I'm talking about is the O 
in owner, the vowel in front of the consonant at the beginning of the word. And then let, let's read this backwards and just check it out and see if, it, if the mathematical interface is there. For the claimant, oh, wow, the abbreviation also is missing punctuation. Crazy. For the claimant of this conveyance is with the channel owner parties matter. Who is the channel owner? I don't own this YouTube channel. I'm definitely not an owner. I don't, I'm not, I didn't buy it. You know what I mean, I use it. I'm the master of it. I'm the commander of it, but I don't own it. I'm a steward of it. I don't participate with ownership. And I've made that very clear in many of my videos. So perhaps this individual isn't real familiar with my videos. So with the channel party, channel owner parties matter of the channel. What? For the claimant of this conveyance is with the channel owner parties matter of the channel owner party's knowledge with the closure of the gain with the seek of the claim. All right, so reading it backwards, I'm getting a different meaning than what than what I see reading forwards. Claim is always the facts with the claim of the seek, with the gain of the closure, with the channel owner party's knowledge of the channel party's matter. The positional sequencing is correct. But the way the facts are, you know, the facts do not maintain the same value forwards as they do backwards. And I've seen this before in this, this gentleman's correct sentence structure. They, they just appear to haphazardly throw it together. So, I mean, it is what it is. But I'm not really sure what they're asking. I think they're asking... I think, and this is a guess, folks, I think they're asking, they want closure on where I got my knowledge from. But knowledge of what? What, what are we talking about here? So they're seeking, but we don't know what they're seeking. So again, it's good to have closure on the grammar before you start using it. I mean, it's good to practice it, of course. But if you don't have closure on it, it's also very considerate. To translate what you're saying into plain simple English into brackets after it so that I and everybody else know what it is you're trying to convey that way no one can ever say that they don't understand you they don't cognize you that they're not on the same page with you because you've gone you you have crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's you've written it in what you think is correct sentence structure and you've also written it in plain simple English Next comment comes from member for the claimant. Thank you for your membership. And they say, hi, Jason. Thought this might be relevant to contribute. The ancient and primitive rite of Memphis Mizraim is a combination of two Egyptian rites, Memphis and Mizraim, which was founded in 1881. Memphis is also a musical term in i guess roots music circles where you would go to memphis tennessee to get that memphis sound that soulful sound anyways which was founded in 1881 the mizraim right of originated early 1700 in memphis right 1815. i mean allegedly how do we know that for sure unless you are a member of those circles how would anyone be able to certify any of that? The Memphis Rite was supposedly founded, okay, there we go, supposedly founded by Freemasons who had joined the Napoleonic battle campaigns, learning of ancient Egyptian initiation rites. This order has 99 degrees, with the first 33 degrees being similar to that of Scottish Rite. I mean, I, I can logically deduce things, of course, for my own self, uh, however, I can't really verify or certify any of it because I'm not a Freemason. And so I would never make a claim or a statement uh, that I know something for sure about them. But uh, thank you for the data there for the claimant. Next comment comes from Vlastil. They say, well, I thought 
that you do not take a notice of conspiracies since facts matter. Bill Cooper has a history and evidently he was killed. Evidently, evidently, bro, Bill Cooper was shot and killed by police in his front yard. Witness testimony. Uh, there are pictures. It's not evidently. It, it is. It happened. So what kind of initiation did DWM went through? Eyes wide shut style. I don't really know and I don't really care. I don't know anything about, you know, as far as actual rituals and rites that Freemasons do. I have no idea. That's, that's their business. Nothing to do with me. So my Kuliana 2 Vlas deal was share one specific quote of me claiming that I do not take a notice of conspiracy since facts matter. And I will take your presumptive comment seriously. I read Cooper's book in 1991. When did you first learn of him? So what, I, what I'm saying to Vlastil here is I have never said that I don't take a notice of conspiracies because obviously I do. If I speak about them, that's noticing them, right? So I don't know where they're getting this from. Facts matter, yes. But that doesn't mean you don't take notice of conspiracies. That's like saying you try and, you know, um, I don't take notice of curves in the road because going straight matters. Well, what kind of logic is that? And then they respond back, Jason, I heard of him about 2004 or 6. I am sorry for what happened to him. He took a stand and tried to challenge things that did not fit the narrative. But how do you want to certify numerous claims of his? I'm not worried about certifying any claims of his. When, when did I ever say that? I never said I wanted to certify Bill Cooper's claims. <laughs> what do we really know about DWM? Well, I know that uh, I personally spoke with him multiple times and during the last year of his life. So while I definitely, certainly was not a friend, I definitely got to know him a little bit through, you know, Skype calls and emails and things like that. And also just like you and everybody else through videos. And also through friends of his that I got to know. You have history, I have history, I can certify with numerous witnesses and they would honestly testify about me because they are experienced with me. You learnt yourself about the decency of RJG, for example. The what? Is that sarcasm? I can't tell if that's sarcasm. Eisenhower, JFK said enough about secret societies. Enough said. Well... I mean, I guess that's your opinion. Um, I don't know what this has to do with what the... See, the topic that this individual is commenting on is I published a short audio clip of William Milton William Cooper saying that he learned there were more than 33 degrees in masonry, that they were up in the 90 degrees, up in the 90s that he was aware of, that he found out about. And I was using that as a certification of what David Wynn Miller claimed when David Wynn Miller claimed he was a 92nd degree Mason. That's all. Nothing to do with any other claims. David claimed he was 92nd degree Mason. William claimed that he discovered that there were degrees in Masonry that went up past 90 degrees. Two things basically about the same matter to a certification. It's that simple. I don't I don't know what where else to go with that. There was nothing else said about it. So then I said this short audio is what I refer to as a continuous of evidence or witness testimony, cooperation, etc. etc. An individual totally unrelated to David Wynn Miller, Cooper, cooperating David Wynn Miller's claim of 92nd degree Mason, one of the strongest forms of second or third hand evidence. Throw out all of David Miller's claims because of one or two fantastic claims is a logical fallacy known as composition and division. Also, once one has 100% closure on correct sentence structure, the rest of the conspiracy stuff you're referring to take on an entirely new light. Again, folks, it comes down to closure on the grammar. When you don't have closure on the grammar, you will sit there and mitigate with people over and over again about shit like this. It's 
think about it. I think it's a much more, in my humble perception, it's a much more efficient use of your now space. If you just commit to getting closure on the grammar and then uh, and go from there. Here's another comment on the same post. Owen Bruce says, he stated it himself. Without comparison means little to most. Stated, he's talking about David Miller stating that he was a 92nd degree Mason. And then I said, just because someone states something doesn't make it true. A continuance of evidence is needed for most. And here it is. And what I'm saying is, just because David said it doesn't mean it's true. Right? Just because I say something doesn't mean it's true. But if someone else can back me up and say, yeah, you know, and then they say the same thing, especially <clears throat> if they don't know me and they say the same thing I say, you know, and they don't know me, that's, that's pretty strong evidence right there. So that, that's all I was trying to do uh, to give a little continue to the evidence. And then uh, Pi314 says, some need 20 parts for the continuance of evidence. Yeah, some people do. And just because William Cooper said it, and just because David Wynn Miller said it, doesn't necessarily make it true either. <laughs> because if David Wynn Miller's a Mason, which he claims to be a 92nd degree Mason, then his loyalty lies to Masonry. And he's not going to give away sacred knowledge or whatever of masonry haphazardly. He's not going to. He's not going to betray his brotherhood because he took an oath. Uh, some believe everything they see on the internet and some believe David Miller could do no wrong and believe everything he said. For instance, he said there are 10 billion people on planet Earth and 5 billion of them are students. I'll let a mathematician handle the rest. And then Owen Bruce said, to clarify his statement had no meaning, very few even have any grasp of the degrees of the FM system. And then I said, why do you think you are qualified to presume what is meaningful to others? Because he said his statement had no meaning. I mean, to be more specific, Owen could have said his statement has no meaning to Owen Bruce. I mean, making a claim for others is wild. Are you a Freemason? So I asked him if he's a Freemason. And then uh, Pi314 chimes in, I find it humorous that some think there is something to know more than the number of the 33 vertebrae in the human spine, vinyl RPM 33 at a 90 degree angle. David Miller was a funny fellow. He finds it humorous that some think there is something to know more than... So out of all the knowledge that's available in the world, Pi314 thinks it's humorous that people need to know more than what he just said there. I find that humorous, <laughs> that assumption. Okay, Owen Bruce says, my qualifications are not for publication. Why have you chosen to expound upon a DWM statement? Okay, so he doesn't want to answer the question. He doesn't want to qualify himself in the, pub in the public for publication. So now, when someone does that, that makes me think, okay, well, this Owen Bruce is probably a Freemason. I'm guessing. All right? I don't know if he is or he isn't. I'm not stating that as a fact. I'm saying that what he's saying, his reticence to credential himself, leans me towards that way. And then I said, if your qualifications are not for publication, then thank you for your sharing your opinion. I did not expound on David Wynn Miller's statement. I certified it by publishing an audio clip from William Cooper. To expound would mean I explained it. I did no such thing. So yeah, you know, maybe it would be a good idea to look up the word expound in the fiction and find out what the modern meaning of that is, because that means you're basically expanding on something. I'm not expanding on anything. I was just certifying, using a certification, a continuance of evidence, to basically provide evidence for what Dave, the claim that David made of 92nd degree Mason. I don't know why people got to make such a complicated big deal out of it. I guess it really hits some people in the feel goods, you know what I mean? And here we have some comments regarding the... Uh, 
third edition of Continuum Conversations that I did with uh, my friend and student, Stefan. And uh, Member Property Geek, thank you for your membership, says, this was a brilliant interview, one of those bangers I can share with everyone, and I know 100% they will get the meaning of what the subject it's all about. What this subject it's all about. Thank you for those kind words. And For the Claimant says, For the Claimant's Knowledge of the Facts is with the claim of the gratitude with the broadcast of the continuum conversation with the speak performance of the Jason Matthew and of the Stephen Charles with the sensation of the joy with the peaceful volition by the claimant. For the claimant. Um... I can probably guess that you wrote in uh, quantum grammar shorthand because of space limitations in the YouTube's comments field. Because I don't recommend doing that at all. Because no one's going to really know how to read that. Like, I just read it. Like, no one's going to... No, I don't know anyone else that will be able to do that. Because they'll lose track of the colons and the withas and the of and the of those after the verb. The other thing I'd like to bring up is you misspelled my name. And again, this is comes down to like when I write out a correct sentence structure, I check it at least three times. Meticulous and precise about this stuff. Especially when it comes to the correct spelling of people's names for the balance of the honor and the grace. Just so you know, there are two T's in the fact, Matthew, for future reference. Next comment comes from Quadruple A, and they say, that famous nine-hour seminar does it every time. The other seminars he did with and without Russell J. Gould are of no lesser value, if you ask me. Thank you for your membership, Quadruple A, and... Yeah, that nine-hour seminar is a classic. There is no doubt about it. If you're interested in quantum grammar, if you're interested in correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, that is required critical viewing. Next comment comes from member for the claimant, and they say, Hi, Jason. In reference to the continuum conversations three at the broadcast location of 42 minutes through to 44 minutes, 26 seconds, the topic of conversation turns to the history of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, referring to grammar performances, similarities in early land deeds and court documents, making use of prepositional phrases, prepositional phrases, we would say. Also, the subject of punctuated presidential names arises, shedding light on the lack of a continuance of the evidence. I have also struggled to find evidence in regard to the punctuation of presidents' names. However, I did find the cartographer, H-E-N-R, who's, what's, I've never seen that name before. Do they mean Henry? Hondio, whose name uses full colon punctuation on the Novos. Totifs. Ter, okay, I can't. I'm not going to say that. The 1633 World Map. Also, the book Grand Lodge of Mark Master Mason's Constitution, 1917. Some of the titles hold similarity to a correct sentence structure performance, although they are not correct performances. And they contain negative conditions of state. I thought they were worthy of a mention, for example, for the government of the order of Mark Master Mason's. I really enjoyed this video. Thanks, as always, for the valuable contribution and investment. Yeah, for sure. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Um for the claimant if you look in those old land deeds and and even court documents from back then you will find language exactly like this for the government of the order of mark master masons but i'm curious what you're talking about here um i would like a continuance of the evidence for that because i have never seen anyone before David Wood Miller came out with this stuff, anyone using a full colon to punctuate the beginning of their name or uh, after their middle name and their last name. I've never seen it. So I would definitely like proof of what you're saying. Okay. 
but you see there are colons used here this is interesting okay so you can see the spacing here let's look let's take it all into context folks uh, what I'm doing when I'm performing forensics here on this is I'm seeing Nova all right there are no spaces in between these letters and then there's a space here and then there's this word and then a space here so we can see that there are words here words are forming of course we have a particle of negation here but I'm not really looking at that right now I'm looking at the spacing between the words there's definitely space single spacing in between the words and then there's this period and this space between this A and this period is not the same as the space between this word and that word. So now we have what appears to be a space here and an A, no space, U, no space, C, no space, C. And it looks like a space, colon, space, H, no space, E, N, R. And to me, it looks like a space, colon, space, and then this word, and then a space and a period. So there's no consistency here in the punctuation. But I do see what you're saying about the individual using the colons in their name. So now I can say that I have seen evidence of colons being used in a name, there just is no colon at the beginning here. Um, so it's nowhere near correct sentence structure. It kind of looks like it, but it's not. So thank you very much for pointing that out for the claimant. That was, that was fun. Now we have some more evidence that something like this, this type of style may have existed in the past before David came onto it. Maybe it existed like this and then David took it and fine-tuned it maybe i don't know this is all speculation i have no idea because even after david's fine tuning there were still lots of mistakes in it and inconsistencies so it's fascinating thank you another one from pi 314 and they say the cosmos has put that in place for them as well seems like a conscious universal authority god that you are claiming Oh, so they're quoting me out of a video where I said the cosmos has put that in place for them. And to them, it seems like they, they, that I'm making some sort of implication that there's a conscious universal authority God. They're telling me that it seems like I'm claiming something other than what I'm claiming, basically. So then I say, please refrain from assumptions. I say cosmos, not God. And I speak plainly, which I did. I meant cosmos. Cosmos is a fact in my dictionary. God is not. And then they say, after some more thought, a conscious cosmos would be symptomatical of God and not God. Thanks. And then I said, symptomatic of, a, of an universal authority? Interesting. Believing in an uncertifiable, unverifiable, universal authority could be symptomatic of something as well. <laughs> Side note, if you were to gain 100% closure on correct sentence structure, I'm 99.9% .9 sure your view viewpoint on this matter would be different. And I'm certain of that. Once you have complete closure on the grammar and you completely 100% have closure on cognizing what a fact is, and certifying said facts, you'd have a completely different outlook on this. That's my educated guess. Of course, they don't touch on that. Of course, they don't touch on their lack of closure on the grammar. Rather, they focus on, my point was to point out that your statement suggested to the, suggested the cosmos universe placed a guidance sign for the benevolence of this human's existence. My cognition, and, and that's, Okay, it suggested it to them. I can't say what someone perceives what I say as 
or the meanings they take from it. But I was not with my volition suggesting anything other than what I said. Reading more into it is assumption. And that's on you, not me. My cognition is this is an intention of a supreme authority God in the fiction artificial verbiage. As much knowledge is needed. I have no study of any religion knowledge. For the claim is knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the void whole knowledge. With our creator's finite meaning of of the Creator's purpose with the continuum seek by this claimant. And then I say, your sentence at the end contains a particle of negation in the facts. Inconsistent casing, the same mistakes he made in his other sentences, and also contains an assumption. I'll leave it to you to figure out what the negative particles are. The assumption is the use of the lodial hour. Who is our? Are you making a claim for yourself, or did others give you consent to make a claim for them? Um... Of course, they didn't get back to me. They don't know probably what the particle of negation is in the sentence. So I'll leave it up to you, the viewer. See if you can find the particle of negation in Kenneth Wayne Caltan's sentence. I see that they're spelling their name different now. It used to be Kenneth hyphen Wayne colon space Caltan. Now they've hyphenated it and made it one whole compound fact. Interesting. I wonder if it looks that way on their live life claim. Next comment comes from Raven is for you. And they say, so what the heck? Your email is not working either. And I said, my email works fine. Has been since December of 2017. Maybe check your spelling. And then I offer a correct spelling of my email. If I had a troy ounce of silver for every time I posted my email address in a video or in a description... Wow. Another one from Raven is for you, and they say, but even Russell J. Gould charges for a live life claim, and he's supposed to be postmaster of the world, so that has been what I have been asking. And then I said, what have you been asking? Please be clear. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea what they're asking. No idea at all. And I've also made my thoughts clear on what I think about people charging money for a claim of the live life. Final comment comes from Terence Herming, and they say, it is good to see people enjoying themselves, honking horns, waving flags, etc. They're commenting on the Palestinian protest that I was in the middle of. Uh, the video, the short video that I posted, my wife and I were caught up in the middle on the front lines of a Palestinian protest on a, on a four-lane freeway in Detroit. And I said, yes, enjoyment is paramount. To a happy life for most not located in a war zone and with that i wish you peace if you would like to learn correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar i offer several choices the first one and the easiest one is to study the almost 900 free public videos on this youtube channel that you're watching right now the second option if you want to see new content is to click the join button on my main YouTube page or under any video that you're watching click the join button and you will see two tiers of membership if you choose the second tier the loyalist contributor tier and you join that for a monthly support donation you'll get new content fresh content exclusive content not available to the public every month but keep in mind there's already almost 900 videos here free to the public to study and the third option is to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen and this is for the serious students only and apply for a correct grammar workshop but please include your correct name when contacting me and I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation and you and I will have a conversation. You can ask me whatever you want. I'll answer your questions. I'll do the same with you. I'll ask you questions and we'll see if indeed you are really serious or not. Thank you.